Coming up on this episode of the Model 3 Owners Club Show. We have some more Model 3 updates for you. Yeah, we'll get to some Tesla news. Some more EV news from around the world. And mailbag. We'll be right back. Well, thanks for tuning into this episode, episode 20 of our show. Can you believe it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe it. I feel old. It's been well over a year, and it's it's a nice to hit this landmark. Great. Well, anyways, thanks for joining us again. My name's Trevor Page. And I'm Kenneth Bocor. Thanks for joining us. So we got a big date coming up. We do have a big date coming up. What could it be? Hmm, we're Canadians. Hmm, what do you think it could be? Happy Canada Day to all of our Canadian viewers. want to thank you all for joining us on this. Uh, it's a big date. It's uh, 150 years for Canada. It's happening on July 1st. Uh, do you have any plans? We're going to go see some fireworks locally. Really? Somewhere, yeah. I think. That's, My wife and I know. are taking off. We're, we're going to go to Ottawa. We're going to go to our nation's capital, and we're going to uh, participate in some of the festivities there. Now, hopefully the rain will hold back. It's not looking too good, but you know what? That's what umbrellas are for. So, I believe it will, and it's going to be packed. I think oh, they're oh, estimating it's... a million people or something. Uh, yeah, it's... I'm not looking forward to that, but at least the public transportation will be free, so we'll be able to get around a little bit easier going to be uh, fun. Speaking Excellent. of which, uh, we're not going to be able to do a show in time for this, but we want to give a big shout out to our American viewers because right. it's July 4th coming up in just a few days as well. So big shout out to those folks. Try not to blow too much stuff up, okay? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun and be safe about it. Be but safe. again, happy 4th of July for our friends south of the border. We yes, appreciate exactly. everybody tuning in. So, well, let's get right into the show. We've got a lot of good news today. Let's start with some Model 3 updates. And I think what caused a lot of buzz over the last couple of weeks was those pics, those really nice clear pics of the interior especially uh, that Model 3 that was being charged and there were some great screenshots and I, I know you did a short video but let's maybe summarize that a little sure, bit here. we'll do a little recap. Yeah. Um, so before we get to the really important stuff I was able to see a little bit more of the interior of course and uh, what we're looking at is what I believe, I believe, um, the liner of the car is Alcantara which is the artificial suede. So Very nice. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I think so too, because if you look at a Model S or a Model X, that's what they come with as well. So it adds a little touch of class to the car instead of the usual cloth. So I think they're trying to make a little distinction. So I, I hope it actually makes it to production. It's looking promising. Um, like I said, I can't confirm it 100%. We do know that there's Alcantara, however, in the door liners, like mm -hmm. on, the, on the door panels that way, mm -hmm. that looks good. Um, I do know the interior is, is relatively soft touch materials, so it's not all hard plastic, so it's looking really good that way. A couple other things in the shot, of course, is that you see the, um, the all glass roof. Yeah. Now, when we say all glass roof, we're talking about the, about the two foot section just above your heads. There's still some discussion going on whether that's going to be uh, a sunroof eventually for a future option. Uh, Tesla engineers had mentioned last year that they might be doing a, a metal option too. Right, because we haven't seen any metal roofs. No, it's been glass. So. Yeah, my personal mm -hmm. opinion is I, I don't think that's that's happening because yeah. if you look at the Model S, they, they got rid of it as well. So I don't think that's really going to happen. So uh, a couple other things too I happen to notice the um, the seat belt adjusters um, are adjustable height wise, just like it is on the Model yeah. X. We don't have that on the Model S. So I never realized that until you pointed that out. That yeah, I well, they never on a hundred thousand dollar car. You don't have that. That's kind well, of I think strange. I think the takeaway from the from the Model Three after looking at the interior now for for a few months is what we're looking at is is Tesla's taking this opportunity to fix some deficiencies on the Model S. Um, they finally that got the sense. cup holders in the right place. Yeah. Uh, they've made the, um, the armrests on the doors wider and not tilt down quite as much. So these are little tiny things. Little ergonomic that really, stuff. That, yeah, yeah, I mm -hmm. think they're really taking an opportunity now to really fix a lot of those things. Now, that also means that I expect to see an interior refresh with the Model S eventually because, you know, it's going to need that too. So yep. uh, it's, it's definitely a different direction. And, and again, uh, you know, it's not for everybody. But I think, um, I think it's going to be really nice when it comes out. What was really exciting beyond that as well was the range predictions, right? So seeing it plugged yes. in, seeing it charge, and you, know, you came out, a whole bunch of the other YouTubers out there that, we, that we're all uh, together on covering the Model 3 and other sites came out with all these predictions about range. But you know, there were some really good calculations, a lot of discussions. So what's your thoughts on that? Well, that it runs see? the gamut. You yeah. have people that are looking at just you know the green bar, and I'll put a picture up behind us here so you can see what we're talking about, and extrapolating, okay, that's sitting at about 30%. So if you multiply it by three, you take your 95 rated, multiply by three, you're over 300 miles. 
Um, you got other people that are trying to do calculations with pixels on Photoshop and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know what? The ranges run the whole gamut here. However, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I have said that I'm, I kind of predicted about 270 miles was a very safe number, and, and I do believe that that's going to be a very safe number. Of course, I'm talking about the larger battery pack. Say, we, we don't, we can't tell by that screen what battery pack it is. I don't think it says no, on there, you, but you we're, can't. we're guesstimating that it is a 75 kilowatt. 70 hour to 75 kilowatt mm -hmm. is yep. what we're looking at here, and yep. we believe that the smaller battery pack will be uh, somewhere in the vicinity about 60 kilowatt 60. hour. Um, but I do believe that there's some other stuff that hasn't come out yet, maybe about the cells that uh, with some new chemistry and stuff that's that's actually going to make some of this stuff um, most likely actually happen. So, uh, you know, we're getting closer to the reveal. We'll, we'll finally find out all the specs towards the end of July. But it's looking very promising here that, uh, that the combination of new cells and efficiencies, aerodynamics, weight savings, a whole yep. pile of stuff on the Model 3 is really going to put it in some very good category. Um, in terms of range, so I'm, uh, I'm. It's looking a lot better. I'm very happy about that. So, so definitely their initial reveal pledge or promise of 250, a minimum of 215 mile range, is well achievable. Well, in the, in the it's absolutely grade. the minimum. It's a, it's kind of the minimum you know, passing grade, which is 200 right. miles these days. But I think uh, I, I have a pretty good feeling Tesla will handily beat it, and uh, give people a very compelling. Uh, Long-range EV at an at an, an affordable price to start, so it's, so it's for, looking really good. So for those of you that have been wondering if Tesla's going to beat the Bolt, that's Bolt with a B. I think it's safe to say the range will be beat on that. I hope so, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> but excellent, check out the pictures, check out all the the coverage on that as well. You're going to be quite pleased at uh, at what you're seeing there. Uh, also, uh, just recently you did a, a tweet about the onboard charger, which I found was great. Now in that picture, it showed. 32. 32 amp, if yes. I got that right. So everybody was assuming mm -hmm. that the maximum onboard charger rate was 32 amps. And I was able to confirm through a third party that it's, it's actually capable of doing at least 48. Now, I believe 48 will probably be the maximum. Because if you look at a Model S, the onboard charger on a Model S or a Model X is 48 amps as mm -hmm. the base. And unless you go for the 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, because now the Model S and the X is 75, or sorry, um, yeah, 75 or 100, 100. kilowatt hour that the 100 kilowatt hour battery packs um, come with the 72 amp uh, charger standard. So with a Model 3 coming in at 70 to 75 kilowatt hour, it doesn't make sense to put something that's larger than what a Model right. S could even do. So, And I was gonna say, in translating that to layman's terms, as far as charging speeds, I mean, I use the analogy of a hose, the bigger the hose, the more water you can flow through that Correct. if it's a water hose. So the electrons, the if you use that analogy, more electrons going through to faster charge. So that means that the car can accept more energy to get a faster charge. Is That's that right. And it's that? all based on the kind of circuit you put in your house or your garage to charge your vehicle. Mm -hmm. Of course, you really want 240 volts somewhere in the vicinity of anywhere from 32 to, you know, say 42 amps, 40 amps, somewhere in that vicinity. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it, it, what it really ends up being is, is an overnight charge of anywhere from four to five hours uh, for a... Um, for a 75 kilowatt. Yeah, kilowatt yeah. And, and let's say you, you're doing a 50% a charge. And like as, mm -hmm. at a zero, it's going to be longer, of course, but most people don't drain a battery down to zero on a daily basis. And that's what supercharging's for. If you're I will at distance. first when I'm driving the heck out of that <laughs> thing. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Anyhow, so it's looking yep. promising. Uh, we'll find out the full details later on, but it's... It, I can I can tell you right now it's able to do at least uh, um, at, at least 32, but it's definitely 48. Good news, and it'll all be revealed within a month, hopefully or mm -hmm. less. We'll see. There's been a lot of uh, discussions about people holding on and really wanting to look at all-wheel drive versions of it versus the real wheel drive. And we talked about that last show, but there was a a tweet that Elon just put out a couple of days ago. Um, somebody was asking about. A real wheel drive is is it good enough in the snow for the for the winter climates cold climates and he said yeah you know it's really good in the snow you've got to have good winter tires and you know we're both firm believers of running winter tires up here all the time in in non electric cars um, so he says you know traction control is far more precise with good tires so um, for those of you that are kind of on the fence maybe looking at holding off on your reservation you know delaying it because you want all wheel drive if you're concerned about traction in the snow it seems to be not an issue. Is that your take on it? Yeah, I mean, uh, either way, um, it, 
they're both very good technologies and stuff. I think in some ways, if you're thinking you absolutely need it, I mean, you have to weigh the cost against how much is right. this thing going to cost compared to, you know, maybe just a good set of tires. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to wait. I mean, if I can afford the all wheel drive, I will get it. Otherwise, I've driven a car uh, for years in the snow, sedans. Yeah. Like, I mean, if you look Many at guys. most sedans are available in the market in North America. Um, other than the German manufacturers, I can't think of any North American manufacturer that has an all-wheel drive sedan anyway. Um, all the all-wheel drives are all German or... Um, or Subaru. Yeah, or that Subaru. Come, that exactly. Standard, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yep. you, you know, if you're comparing apples to oranges and stuff, you have to kind of look at what's available on the market, and that's really the German mix. Yep. For so for those part. of you that might be holding on, off on your reservation, waiting for all-wheel drive or something else, or options that you want that aren't coming out of the gate in the initial production runs, there was a tweet just yesterday that somebody had asked Elon about, can a Model 3 reservation be extended? Um, if you know the options that you want aren't available and he bluntly said yeah we'll extend it so that makes sense that coincides we were talking about this just before we started taping uh, that's what's even Model X probably people are still waiting today. there are some people and that had put reservations down on the Model X four years ago that still haven't pulled the trigger in the car so a reservation wow. is not an order it's just a reservation right. for somewhere in the spot so yes, you could definitely hold on to your reservation until you're ready to pull the trigger. And then I guess you would just contact a sales office and say, hey, I'm ready to kind of move on that. And then replace they your order online and then it. it gets confirmed and off yeah. you go. There you go. And then you're back in the queue. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, on the, the model, uh, on the Tesla website in the US, it doesn't show up in Canada, but certainly in the US, uh, there was an option that came out a little while ago about test driving a Tesla Model 3 in that section, and that they are announcing that they're going to be providing test drive capabilities for the Model 3s, I take it just in the US to start, sometime later this year or the latter part of this year. Um, now in the past, they've done that, right? With SNX, they would ship some cars out to um, to the stores and allow reservation holder, holders an opportunity to test drive these, and they may have limited numbers that they'll travel around to different stores but I think that's positive. I certainly would love to have a test drive before finalizing any orders. What's your take on that? Uh, well, we'll see how they do it with the Model 3. I remember mm -hmm. with the Model S when it first came out, they had what was called the Get Amped Tour, mm, and they right. took some of the beta prototypes around to some various places, like I saw some videos online in Florida. And, so uh, this might be Get Amped Again or something. Well, there maybe, you go. but I think <laughs> well, with the production capabilities this time, yeah. they may be able to make a small fleet of cars yeah. and then send them out to the stores. Now, they do have a link on their website that says... Um, they had planned to build some cars sometime in the third quarter to send them out to the stores. Okay. Now, I think what this thing is talking about really is that priority to, for res, uh, for test drives will be given to, to those of us who have reservations first rather than, say, the general public just coming in because, of course, there's going to be a huge backlog of people wanting to pull the trigger on this thing. And, of course, if they're like you, they really want a test drive on the car before they pull the trigger. So. Uh, we'll have to wait and, and see what happens. But uh, yeah, no, the test drive thing is definitely going to happen. It's just a matter of when. All right, continuing on. So there's been still more sightings of Model 3s, obviously, um, in different areas now, not just around the f factory anymore. They've been spotted in other states. We mentioned Ohio before, mm -hmm. where we believe that they're sending a lot of those vehicles for crash testing yes. purposes. Yeah. So they're obviously being spotted in Ohio, but also in Utah, Illinois, and then a new silver one has arrived at the LA Design Center just recently. So that's exciting that they're starting to get around. That's right. And we just got uh, some first pictures uh, of a Model 3 being unloaded from a cargo jet in Auckland, New Zealand. That's right. Beautiful city, by the way. Yes, been there. Hi, New Zealand. Ago. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Queenstown. <laughs> that's right. So I think we're guessing because it's winter down there that uh, this is probably for some winter testing as well. Definitely not to to start you know, fulfilling orders in New Zealand quite quite soon because uh, first of all they're going to need right-hand drive vehicles which we haven't seen any this was definitely a left-hand drive vehicle uh, in the pictures that you could see mm -hmm. and uh, I think delivery estimates are not till later 2018 at the earliest for yeah well, again don't don't get your but hopes we up don't that know this for is sure. a car destined for the market they are right. uh, I mean yeah you're right it's winter down there there is a testing facility called the southern hemisphere mm -hmm. uh, research or testing facility and it's about 45 minutes northeast of Queenstown I believe so I think the car is probably destined to be uh, doing some winter testing down yeah. there because, of course, with the timing, of course, um, you know, Tesla's done winter testing in the past in countries like Norway and Sweden. Of course, yep. they can't do that this time of year. So you have to go to South 
Southern That's Acid it. Hemisphere to do this kind of testing. So the roads aren't any good in Ar- Antarctica. So <laughs> <No>. <laughs> notch it up a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> but it's all good. Uh, now we've talked about the battery cell production and there's been a lot of coverage about that. But it's just been again reconfirmed uh, through uh, J.B. Straubel. Uh, he was at an industry fair um, just last weekend or so that yeah, we could Wisconsin make so in Wisconsin Energy, Energy yeah. Fair. Yeah, and he did a speak and he basically said that the gig- the Gigafactory has started battery cell production for the Model Three. Uh, of course, they use the 2170 cells that are that are in that vehicle. Um, they began making those cells at the, at the beginning of this year, which we talked about uh, in production runs. And you could see the videos. And Elon even mentions, you know, that they had to slow it down because it's so fast. It's like a machine gun <laughs> yeah. uh, speeds. But uh, those were for Powerwall and Powerpack. So these ones actually for the Model 3, destined for Model 3s are now being built and in production. And of course, these cells are made at the Tesla Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada. They're in partnership with Panasonic, and they are scaling it. Uh, they're scaling up on that factory to to make f- enough batteries for half a million cars by the end of 2018. Mm-hmm. So progress is being made. Yeah, they have to start production now because there's a um, there's a room at the at the Gigafactory where they do um, uh, seasoning, if you will. Hmm. Uh, I think the batteries the chemistry mm-hmm. has to settle for a little bit. And I have no idea how long they have to settle for. But they have to start stockpiling, you know, to start making the battery packs because production. That's a secret start. sauce, I guess, kind of thing. Yeah, like KFC thing formula. <laughs> How they get the caramel in the caramel bar? <laughs> we can go on and on. Yeah, excellent. And of course, in to continue ramp up for uh, Model Three production, Tesla has asked for a, an increased credit line uh, by another eight hundred million. They've got they got some cash earlier this year, some credit line advances or increases earlier. Um, but they've been going through a lot of investments and getting these cars out and other things that they're doing. So uh, it's all good. I mean, they've got they're very healthy, money in the bank. It takes a lot of money to build a car. <laughs> it takes a couple of dollars, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, sure. And of course, uh, they want to uh, get these cars all around the world. Now, in other updates, Tesla is also working with partners around the world to expand the charging infrastructure. And we report on, on expansion of, of this all the time. But Australia has hit the news where there's a partnership with 31 shopping centers across the country. And they are to deploy Tesla destination chargers. And the charging there will be for free. So you go to shop, awesome. you park your car, you'll charge. You'll charge for free through the Tesla destination charger program. Um, and then also they're going to provide the first year of Tesla ownership free home charging. So if you partner with AGL Energy in Australia, they're going to work a deal where your first year of home charging will be free when you purchase a Tesla. So that's pretty what, cool. Yeah, that's similar to what we're supposed to be getting here in Ontario. And of course, it hasn't hit the books yet, but we're supposed to be getting like something like four years or something. I, I heard a year, but I'll take four. I'll take Thank four. You. <laughs> I might be wrong, but For that's sure. what I thought it was anyways. But yeah. uh, we're looking forward to seeing that if that happens. So it's all good news on, on expanding mm-hmm. the EV footprint around the that's world. Right. Um, another milestone that Tesla hit uh, just late last month or early this month has been U.S. sales. They've passed the $100,000 mark. So there's some, some sites that have reported. 100,000 cars. 100, cars, sorry, 100,000 cars uh, in the USA that have been delivered. Um, that's pretty good when you're considering they've just been in the market for over five years, you know, um, and selling very expensive autos. So not selling $25,000 cars here, uh, but $100,000, you know, roughly average price vehicles for them to, to hit that in USA is pretty good. And I think that means there's still time for people that want to cash in on the, the federal um, tax credit. Yes, this is there's so much digital ink been spilt over this topic. It's I get lots of emails on that. So you know, just to remember, folks, that the um, the EV tax credit that you can apply for as a U.S. resident starts phasing out once a manufacturer, because this is on a per manufacturer basis, once they've sold 200,000 cars in the U.S. market, not global, but in the U.S. market. U.S. only. So if this number is indeed accurate, what we're looking at here is uh, the potential of Tesla hitting the 100,000 car mark well into Model 3 production. Um, It might even start happening, if all things go well, uh, maybe right into mid-2018. Mm-hmm. So those of uh, those of you who are really looking at uh, being able to try to cash in on that uh, tax credit, uh, looks like there's going to be a lot of time. So it's looking uh, a lot more positive. Of course, this is based on that number being accurate. Right. So and I, what did they say? They thought within about 100 cars of being... Yeah, around right the end of there. May, they were about 100 cars short. So I think it's safe to say they've done that by so now. So if, mm-hmm. if this is true and this is looking good, it's still looking really good. Of course, Elon has tweeted in the past that they were going to try and do the right thing 
And I'm yes. kind of paraphrasing, but I'm pretty close to what he said, that we will try and do the right thing, even if it means a revenue shortfall in a quarter. So to me, that speaks that they could potentially hold back deliveries of the other cars to make sure that a lot of Model 3 reservation holders could get access to the tax credit. So it's all positive. I hope it works out. So yeah. we'll see what We'll see what happens. And as a side note on this topic, our friend Ben at Tesla Nomics um, put an, uh, a YouTube video out a little while ago about his predictions about Model 3 builds for this year. He's predicting around, if I got the number right, uh, 82 to 95,000, if I got his numbers correct. So quite a swing there as far as Ooh. how many he thinks is going to be built. Um, I'm going to go on record, and I don't think they're going to do more than forty-five to fifty thousand Model Threes this, this calendar year. <laughs> yeah, we'll put some money on. We'll do some side bet. Somebody's going to wash somebody's windows or something <laughs> in their house. Uh, I just, you know, just looking at where they're going. I know there's. I know they've been gearing up. I know there's. You know, we've. You've got some sources that say there's going to be some a lot of cars available right out of the get-go. So they're doing the right things. Um, I, you know, they still have to work things out. So I think that's a conservative number. And, you know, being Canadian, we're all about being conservative to a point. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take on that? Are you going to go on record and call a number? Uh, You're going to no, hang I, me out I, to dry there. You know, like, I'm going to err on the safe side. Yeah. I've, I've always thought that they would probably do somewhere in the vicinity of about 50,000 cars. Um, production ramps are, are really crazy things yeah. because when you start, you have to start slowly it's not like car factories you build a car factory and you flip the switch and all of a sudden you get 5,000 cars a week it doesn't work like that you have to start slow and then you have to check and there's a lot of quality control and then some cars might need to be scrapped and you have to start over so you have to be careful about these predictions I mean I would love to be wrong and they pump out 100,000 sure. cars That's I, correct. I would be ecstatic it means I get mine sooner Yep. but reality is Tesla is still a relatively young manufacturer they still have to you know get some stuff together I mean, it's nice that they have some very good, well-seasoned uh, executives that they've hired from other companies to help them with mm -hmm. this. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's it's still a car, and you still there's still thousands of parts you got to put together, and there's processes. So a ramp is like what Elon has mentioned many times before. It's an S curve. You start slow, and then at one point, mm -hmm. things can really get going. And somewhere it kind of flattens out. Then those economy of scales kick in and pricing starts going down and efficiencies are improved. Well, that's an important so thing forth. because yeah. a lot of people mm -hmm. are saying, oh, I'd be able to get a $35,000 car right off the bat. And that's not what Tesla's trying to do here. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that they're going to do all uh, rear wheel drive cars first, much simpler configuration. So basically, you know, pick your color, maybe a wheel size, uh, no interior color options other than black and a higher uh, capacity battery pack because that's at the end of the day that's that's if that's if that's the most complex part you have to build then you have to make sure that your automation is capable right. of it so make the bigger packs first yep. and then once you get that sorted out then you can introduce more options and lesser options a little bit later on okay. so um and yeah. the reasoning could be that the 75 is going to be the most more demanding choice anyway more popular choice well, so, well that's a really you know, good let's point let's get those because, going yeah and that's a really good point because um, you know, I don't have any formal surveys on this, but everybody that I talk to either on Twitter or in the or, or on YouTube or, or other facilities, mm -hmm. I mean, the number one thing that people want is a larger battery pack. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Tesla knows this based on sales. I mean, mm -hmm. they discontinued the 60 kilowatt uh, hour battery pack on the Model S because it just wasn't selling all that great. So the larger battery packs are what people want. So why not put that out first? Um, yep. You know, it's, it's solid Works for state. Me. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you know. So... We'll see how it goes, but uh, I would love to be wrong. <laughs> if they produce more cars, it, it, it's just good news for everybody around. So. Well, they are trending if you look at them compared to the Ford Model T, which, was, again, was a game changer in the industry at the time. There really wasn't the auto industry to say much for. There were some early uh, electric vehicles. In fact, they were the first vehicles versus mm -hmm. ICE cars. But there's a comparison, this articles that have come out about how they're tracking against the Model T when it came out versus uh, their launch. You know, I mean, uh, in Ford's case, the Model T was initially a luxury item. It was not affordable to the mass market. Gee, does that sound familiar on Tesla? <laughs> um, and there was really a little incentive for buyers uh, to even buy. And we're not talking financial as much as it just wasn't infrastructure like in roads at that time, you know, in or that day and stations. age or, or infrastructure to support them. Exactly. Um, so again, similarity to Tesla where, you know, they've come out of the gate in that type of mode, um, but they are still from a from a, a, a time frame, you know, in that short span of five, or just over five years that we mentioned earlier that Tesla has been selling cars, they are slightly ahead of, of Model T. Um, but again, we just talked about the S-curve, that hockey stick kind of uh, um, 
something happening with Tesla that it will get to that point, and we think the Model 3 is going to contribute to that. So if they can deliver. There's a lot of parallels. Seems like a, lot of parallels a lot of parallels with Ford. Because mm-hmm. when Ford first started out, they had the River Rouge plant, which was very vertically integrated. Right. And we're seeing That's a right. lot of that with mm-hmm. Tesla, of course, you know, making their own battery packs in the cars. So uh, it may not be the case forever, but it's, uh, it's interesting to note a lot of the parallels. Interesting, for sure. And continuing with Tesla updates, uh, our friends in India, there's talks that uh, Tesla's uh, uh, speaking to India's government to look at importing vehicles and potentially build a factory in India for Tesla's. Uh, they want temporary relief right now on the import penalties and restrictions. I don't have a number on what those are, but I, I would guess they're fairly high considering a lot of other countries mm-hmm. have very high uh, import uh, penalties and tariffs. Until Tesla can build a factory, we have no time frame when that's going to happen, but certainly India is on the, uh, is also uh, in part working towards climate change and curb their emissions and they're looking at ways to push their entire fleets to EVs by 2030. And this is a number we've seen other other countries, uh, that 2030 is a significant number, you know, yeah. where they're looking to ban the sales of ice cars and things like that. It's uh, yeah, interesting times. There's a lot times. of parallels here. China's the same way. They mm-hmm. have very high import duties. They want manufacturing on mm-hmm. their soil, and then that way they can levy, or they can eliminate a lot of these levies and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that they're courting India as well, because mm-hmm. that's another emerging market just like China is. Yeah. And we know that Tesla is going to build a lot, you know, more factories. They've already stated, you know, yeah. could be 10 to 20 more. Yeah. You know, we'll, right. we'll know more towards the end of this year. That's right. Um, now, some other Tesla updates as well. The Model X uh, U.S. crash tests were released. And if you've seen the videos, they're pretty cool to watch. Um, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, NHTSA for short, uh, released all the videos uh, for the uh, U.S. crash tests and that they certified the Model X as in five stars. Finally. Finally. We've been yeah, waiting for the couple, official. It was a couple mm-hmm. or three episodes ago, we had mentioned that we still had not seen any of the crash rating testing on the Model X being released even though the car was already in production for a year and a half. So mm-hmm. finally we got these numbers. And so. they, they got five stars in every category, which includes frontal crash, side crash, that side pole crash, which is a kind of a neat one. Mm-hmm. Cringe a little bit when I watch <laughs> that one. And roll over. And uh, again, they're the first SUV, the Model X, to ever get this rating. It's quite an achievement. Yep. And they have that. said that the uh, Model 3 is full intended to get five star in every category as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're uh, two for three on this one. Yeah. Or, uh, so I think right. that they're certainly going to achieve that with the Model 3. Yeah. So keep our fingers crossed. Safest sedan on the market in that class of vehicle. Check out the videos. It, it really shows that steel cage, you know, that of, of how it holds together if yeah. you really watch things. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Let's get to California and some other EV news. Um, Cal- California or the uh, CARB, California Air Resources Board, has launched a clean vehicle rebate project. So kind of similar to what we have here in Ontario for some incentives, but this is um, to give up to $4,500 off of a BEV or a battery electric vehicle. And it's a refund that you get by check. Now the amount is income based. So you have to go to their website to look at all the details, depending on it's a sliding scale on how much you make as a family or or your personal income, but you can get up to $4,500 back. And this is on top of other incentives that are out there. Mm -hmm. So good good for them. Yes. Excellent. Continue to spur on uh, EV adoption and, you know, put their thumbs down to the Trump administration. But that's another story. <laughs> Let's see what happens there. Uh, and staying in the U.S., uh, some numbers have come out that the U.S. has now achieved more than 16,000 public charging stations across the country. Uh, if you want an exact number, it's 16,038. Um, with, As of when? Because it's um, probably that's like a, an, I'm guessing end of May. I don't. It's you're like right. an odometer. Like every second goes by, there's another one being installed. True. Almost. True. It is. It is getting that fast. Yeah. That's uh, over 43,000 charging outlets. Um, at that scale. Most of them are level two, but about 13% or so are DC fast chargers, which are ranging from 20 to 120 kilowatt charge capabilities. And now when you compare that to well over 100,000 gas stations that are out there in the US, we have a long way for EVSEs to go, but hey, it's progress. Well, the one thing you have to remember though too, Ken, is that it's much, much easier to install a charging station or a plug than it is to do a gas station. That's, yeah, absolutely so true. So even though it's still early days for this, uh, I'm going to say here in the next five years, uh, we will certainly exceed 100,000 charging stations for cars. So this is something that's going to just keep growing because, like I said, it's easier to put with these things in than, than a gas station. And we're going to need them because as, as more cars transition, it's just something that's good. And it's cheaper, too. I'm not betting against you on that. I oh, totally agree. Yeah. We're just starting to see the, the boom go now. 
Um, speaking of EV booms, Argentina, our friends down there, hola, como estas? Um, the government has effective middle of May, they've lowered their import duties for electric vehicles from a pretty high 35%. Wow. That's that hurts down to zero, you know, no import duty or up to five percent. Wow, um, so that's quite a significant oh, but drop. A big caveat. There is a caveat. Oh, what, what is, is that it? caveat? <laughs> it's the tax breaks are only given to manufacturers that have car factories in the country, so right. it's not for end users. So, and Tesla does not have facility right now in that country, but others do. So, I mean, again, we're all we're you know, our. Sure, we hear about the Model 3, but we also want to help spur EV adoption and mm -hmm. interest. And this is a good way to help promote that down uh, in, in our Latin American countries and our friends down there. So if you are thinking of getting into an EV and, uh, you know, there are some tax breaks that are now available. And also the government's pitching in to uh, build a fast charging infrastructure as well. That was launched to build 220 DC chargers at 110 locations. So, again, they're making some advances. Excellent. Good for them. Good news. Uh, one little article that I picked out that I just wanted to, to let people know again as we talk about the scale of EV adoption and growth is that in Europe, um, at the end of May, I believe, they've now surpassed plug-in hybrid sales with a battery electric or pure EV sales at that time of year. Um, and I think that's due mainly to the more attractive battery electric vehicle models that are on the market, those that have longer ranges. So a lot of people sit on the fence, wait for something a bit longer to, to, to hit and then start buying them. So that's significant because they've been leading um, the sales in plug-in hybrid electric vehicles for quite a long time. And for that shift to happen, it's just showing what's going on. Now, what do you think the best seller in Europe is? I'll take a take guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. Uh, the Renault Zoe. You got it. You, <laughs> you get a gold star. Yeah, it's a great little car, especially the second, the next gen one. You know, it, it's a shame we don't have that car here in North America because I think it would do so well. It's actually a really, really nice car. It is. Yeah, and we've got some emails, some pretty comprehensive emails from our viewers out in Europe that have done some reviews they and send the them car. in. They love them. It's a great car. Mm -hmm. So, but just good to see, again, that whole progress and that whole um, adoption of EV spurring. Mm -hmm. Um, now, we've talked about, you know, you talked about battery technology in many episodes. There was an article that I picked up um, from a company, an Israeli-based company called StoreDot, and they've prototyped or built a what they call a flash battery. They call it revolutionary, um, that it, it, it's very dense and offers a quick charge. In fact, the battery pack that they've created, you can charge in five minutes, and this is a pack that would have a 300-mile range in a vehicle. Um, now, it's it's a prototype. They don't think there's going to be any general availability of these type of packs for at least three years, maybe a little less. But what it does is gives you that closer, you know, experience to that gas station filling type of environment. You know, we go, we're, we're spending five or 10 minutes filling our gas and, and paying for that. So this experience is being shortened potentially by this revolutionary new battery pack. Now, their composition uh, there are some proprietary organic compounds that they use, but they, they use gradient layers of nanomaterials as well, and they avoid the use of graphite, because graphite, apparently white graphite, if I got that right, is not that correct. You're the, you're the genius <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. And of course, it's not, it's their compounds less uh, flammable, uh, goes at higher, needs a higher temperature of combustion, and has a reduced resistance and increased safety. So it's all good news on how battery technology is increasing to develop. And we've talked about, you know, Mr. Don and all these other people, mm -hmm. pioneers that are out there. So it's nice to see some other companies getting into the game. Yeah, but I think it's also important for people to realize here that it's one thing to have some kind of development in a lab, and it's quite another to bring something to production. The real world, have, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's not like uh, these things just exist in a void. Uh, you know, every week we seem to see some kind of new advancement in some kind of battery technology, but it's always lab-based. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and we get a lot of comments, of course, on the YouTube videos and on Twitter and all the usual social media. You know, why isn't Tesla using the latest technology all the time? And the reason has to do with what Tesla's trying to do right now, especially with the Model 3 program and going forward, is getting cost reductions down because that's the number one thing that's really going to make EV adoption really tipping over point, as we call it, yeah. is really get the cost down. So that's what the Gigafactory is all about. So. And you can't do that if you just keep chasing the dragon's tail all the time. You really got to focus on lock what, what is forward. tried, true, and proven. <laughs> um, you know, we have lots and lots of information now that the battery degradation on a Tesla battery pack is virtually minimal. So don't reinvent the wheel. Just stick with what you know and get the cost down. 
So it's not to say that they won't adopt some kind of new battery technology in the future should it be warranted. It's just right now it's all about cost reduction. So that's what that's what's going on. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the thing about uh, you know refilling experience being similar to uh, a gas station, and I believe that will happen because if you look at yeah, the trajectory of the battery costs, the energy density going up, and the charging times going down, of course the charging infrastructure that's keeps increasing, increasing. I mean, Europe's talking 350, 400 kilowatt mm-hmm. now. That um, it, and if you compare that to a gasoline engine, right? Um, inordinate amounts of money are spent uh, trying to refine and 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 try to get eke a little bit more economy out of these gasoline engines uh, to the point where it's almost stagnated. There, you know, it's yep. li- really flat curve. Whereas the battery technology is taking off. So I re- uh, I will say, within the next five or six years, we're really going to see this this five minute experience really happen. I agree. And that's just going to continue to spur EV adoption. And, you know, when we can get to that experience where that's not a hindrance to buying, getting into an EV. It literally is the last objection Mm -hmm. uh, on the list of what people could bring up for electric vehicles (laughs) as to, well, well, I can travel long distance now. And, and, you know, so it's literally that last thing. If you could take that off the list, then the tipping points arrived Mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. So. It's all positive. Yeah. So, but so keep keep watching. It's a in, it's a fascinating industry, and there's a lot of things going on. Mm-hmm. We've got a little bit on some other EV manufacturers that we always like to talk about, and of course, Audi is continuing to push their uh, their e-tron Quattro production and the, their vehicle that they've announced, and they've uh, are building a factory located in Brussels called the E Factory, and that's where they're going to build these cars starting next year. Uh, it's a nice looking car. I think that I think they're going to do well with that. As I said before, you're going to see a lot of activity from the Volkswagen Group and the Mercedes Group. Yep. You're going to see a lot of stuff coming out in the next couple of yeah, years. I think next to Tesla, they're going to be the next really big pushing they're EV. Pushing I mean, Nissan's, very, we'll talk about them in a sec. But. Yeah, they're really pushing hard for this thing. So you're really mm-hmm. going to start seeing some activity on, on that side. I mean, I just saw an article, and it wasn't in our list of things to talk about today, but uh, Audi's even announced that they're going to be buying batteries at $114 a kilowatt. Now, they haven't said whether it's at the cell level or at the pack level. We know Tesla has mentioned in the past that they're $190 at the pack level. So that's including the cells, the modules, the packs, electronics, the wiring, and like Mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So you'll hear numbers being thrown around. Oh, we're a lot lower, but that's at the cell level. I'm sure Tesla is way, way lower than $190 now, especially with the Model 3 coming up because you you can't be doing a car at $35,000 a kilowatt. So. We'll see. It's looking uh, very positive. And I think Tesla wants to get it down to 130 a pack, if I got that right. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me yeah, that they're probably kind of already they're there, in. but it's a secret sauce. They're not talking yeah, about it. I mean, correct. it's a trade secret. So. Mm-hmm. There we go. And and we talked about Jaguar before and their iPACE car. There was an article that came out that just talked about their thermal management strategy, that they're using a heat pump um, in, in generating heat and cooling for the car. Uh, now, this is engineering that they've adopted based on what they've done with their Formula E race car that they're involved with. That's a pretty cool series, by the way. They, they you know, I'm seeing a lot of activity on this yeah. iPACE. A lot of people are really looking at it. It looks, uh, looks really interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's going to be an SUV, a uh, sport SUV, 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, probably 220 EPA miles or so. Um, no pricing yet. They're going to launch this in the second half of next year. But it's, it's again, it's great to this see is, that other guys are getting into it. And this is not going to be a cheap car, folks. This we don't think ja- so. This is a Jaguar. <laughs> right. So right away, the so, cat's going to cost you some money. Yeah, exactly. But it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, yeah. I like the fact they're using a heat pump because I was yeah. able to confirm, of course, with the new... Uh, uh, e-golf for the Canadian market it uses a heat pump um, I know in other markets they use a resist a resistive heater like Tesla does and you can order the heat pump as an extra op and we're getting it standard for here right. um, I really wish Tesla would use a heat pump especially in the Model 3 because it would just reduce the uh, the energy consumption on the battery but who knows maybe it's one of those surprises that they're going to tell us about so but I, think, I have no inside information on that and if I understand this technically uh, correct that the heat pump uh, heats and cools a car quicker um, uses less energy, but the initial cost of that part and the the system to support it is higher, and the, and it adds weight a little bit more minute more weight. So those are kind of the pros and cons of a heat pump versus resistant heating, which is nominal weight, but it takes. My understanding is it takes a while to heat that car or cool the car. Is well, that correct? The, well, the, the AC still uses a, a pump, right? Well, it has its own separate pump. Separate it's, pump, it's, yeah. It's a condens- mm-hmm. uh, condenser system, yep. but. Um, the whole idea with, well, the reason you don't want to use a resistive heater is that you, it, I mean, in the Model S, it's six kilowatts. So that's a lot mm-hmm. of energy that it's pulling out of the, the, the battery pack. That's why most people prefer to use, you know, the seat heaters in the car because you use right. a lot less energy. 
Uh, and then pre-warm and, he, and all that stuff exactly. at home. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and a heat pump uses more of a recirculatory passive system. So it's a lot more energy efficient. That's why it's not tapping mm-hmm. the battery quite as much. So I'm hoping to see that in the Model 3. I'd be really pleased Chris. to see that. If it's not, then it, it just indicates that it's just a cost mm-hmm. savings. But uh, yeah. we'll see. I just ask because we do get some viewers that ask about what's yeah. better, you know, and what's what well, the we, Model 3 is going to come with. I believe it was ago. a little while ago. You're right. Yeah. And we, I mentioned Nissan earlier, so there's been some more uh, news coming out, and we do expect to see more news coming quite quickly regarding Nissan and the new Gen 2 Leaf because they talk about announcing it in September, revealing it. Uh, but there's been some pictures and previews on what they call ProPilot. It's their driver assist system and their levels of autonomy that uh, predominantly for more highway use, uh, similar to auto steer and traffic aware cruise control that they've adopted uh, from similar to what Tesla offers. Um, so that's there's been some pictures and discussions about that. There's some more version two prototypes that have been spotted. Now, again, we don't have any specs on that and mm-hmm. um, you know, we, we're guessing at least 60 kilowatt hour. That's kind of the minimum now, mm-hmm. 200 plus mile range, we'll see. Uh, another partnership, though, that Nissan has is with a company called DBT in France, uh, with Nissan Europe, and then they're going to work to install the next generation 150 kilowatt fast chargers to support this new Leaf. So that's leading to speculation that it may be able to uh, to take faster charging than it does today. With mm-hmm. I think it's is it 6.6 or 7. Point Seven something along those lines today. The the Leafs. Well, that's the built in. Well, that's the onboard charger. The onboard charger, you know, correct? You yeah. You do mm-hmm. DC fast charge that right. bypasses. I think they can only go up to fifty though through DC uh, today. Well, Chatamo, sure. yeah. The, the current Chatamo is fifty. Current Chatamo. Lot, so. so and we don't know if these are Chatamo, but we'll we're guessing they are. Uh, probably. Yeah. Well, Nissan. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see. No information on that one yet. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me if they stick with Chatamo because Japanese right. companies kind of stick right. with that. But uh, either way, see, it's either that or Combo CCS. I mean. Mm-hmm. And again, we bring up these charging infrastructures because we talked about it in our last show um, that even with a Tesla, you can go to other chargers and charge. You have you may need an adapter if it's Chatamo, but you can get a good charge out of it. So you don't always have to look for a supercharging station. That's right. So good to know that DBT is doing this with Nissan Europe and they're going to upgrade over 2,000 locations. With I'm just this. glad to see that Nissan is actually taking some initiative here and actually partnering Finally, with that. Finally, so again. That's good. Again. The manufacturers need to do this. We got to talk about what just came out for manufacturers is BMWs. Now, we, we've been saying that the Model 3 is very similar in size, footprint, pricing to the BMW 3 Series. Well, there's a German newspaper called Handelsblatt reports that they have a source that's saying that uh, the BMW is going to announce an all-electric version of the 3 Series. Right now, they have a plug-in hybrid version of that today. Should be unveiled at the unveiled at the Frankfurt Auto Show in September. September. Um, they're claiming 400 kilometers, 250 miles, but that's NEDC rated. So let's say, again, that 200 mile minimum threshold for North America. No confirmation from BMW, but we'll wait and see. But it's not surprising. No, it does not surprise us at all. We talked about this sh- it, before this, the show started. If they yeah. don't do anything, the Model 3 is going to eat their lunch because Model, th- uh, Model, Model 3, I mean, a BMW 3 Series sales have been on the decline over the last few years, mainly for competition from things like Audi's A4 series and Mercedes C-Class. Um, and of course, now the Model right. 3 is coming on. I but know. year over year, it's been about, about 30% drop, I believe. Yeah, so it's been yeah. quite significant. So, I mean, this is, you know, BMW's cash cow. They got to do something. Mm-hmm. So, and um, so, you know, it's a two-pronged approach. If, if they can put some time and some money and redesign, say, to the 3 Series to go full electric, I mean, they can start off right there. I mean, they had a little bit of an abortive attempt with the i series and they never yeah. really mm-hmm. went anywhere despite right. the fact that it's really neat technology but that technology's only he loves working. the i3 by the way the, the i3 is <laughs> a brilliant car but that's a story for another that's, that's, that's a subject way. for another yeah. time it's okay. but um the problem with the i3 and, it, and the i8 is that the technology involved with those cars is only applicable for low volume production right. i mean they're talking fifty thousand cars a year mm-hmm. uh the bmw 3 series i mean is several hundred thousand a year Mm-hmm. So it makes more sense for them to do that, but they need to do something. Otherwise, uh, you know, they're going to have a lot of. I mean, it's already happened to the seven series. Tesla's yeah. taken so many sales away from these high-end uh, luxury sedans that I'm sure that BMW uh, in the boardrooms have said, "Well, what if the Model Three comes and eats our lunch? We got to do something." Yeah. So I fully expect them to do something about this, but uh, we'll have to wait. Wait till September is going to be an interesting month. A lot of stuff. And I would hate to see them fail because I really like BMW. Me too. One of my favorite manufacturers. 
There we go. And lastly, on the EV manufacturer front, we're, there was another picture that had just come out from a tweet uh, about the Fisker eMotion vehicle. It's um, They're calling it the world's most advanced EV with a 400 mile plus range. And I, I'm not sure if that's European. I think the owners are US, if I got it. So that, no, I think this a tweet company. is a Chinese. Yeah. So I'm not sure what that range is. It seemed really high, nine minutes of fast charging fully autonomous and connected. Um, there's some a full reveal kind of shot of the car and there's some more that have been just put out even today. But if you have 130,000 US to spend on it and can wait till 2019, then it's for you. There you go. <laughs> well, I'll say this, it's a beautiful car. Uh, and the, the nice thing about Fisker is that in the past, despite their technology problems that they've had, they do design right. a, a really nice car. Matter of fact, uh, two days ago I was driving around, I forget where it was, and, and I was driving along and there's a Fisker coming mm. at me in the opposite. Mm -hmm. oh, beautiful white Fisker. Mm. I mean, they're very rare where, where I am. Yeah. So it was very nice rare to see around one. Here and too. I had to point it out to my wife, and she was like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't Fiscu, know about the Fiskers. Yeah. But it's a beautiful car. Yeah. Well, so. Again, good to see. Spurring more EVs. Let's get the mailbag. Mailbag time. Awesome. All right. Well, we've got two uh, uh, emails today that we're going to talk about on our, on our mailbag. One is from John. He doesn't say where he's from, but he talks about Canadian Connection and us. So I'm, uh, we're guessing that, John, you're in Canada. Okay. So thanks for sending this in. His question is, is a great question. It's about autopilot. And he's basically asking, does it work at night? Um, he hasn't really seen anybody, any videos and stuff running autopilot at night. Good it, question. Yes. And uh, yes, it does work at night. Um have to be careful how you say that though because uh, Tesla's working towards a, a full vision system on mm -hmm. autopilot 2. Autopilot 1 cars uh, need to see the the lines you know um, on the road that are painted because it needs that reflection to be able yeah. to see it. So yes but it's only going to get better because with the autopilot version 2 system it's more of a vision system it uses GPS high resolution maps uh, lidar maps that are provided by third party uh, third party companies mm -hmm. so it's going to get to a point where it may not even need to see the lines uh, mm -hmm. once uh, the system is finished so uh, so to answer your question yeah it, it works i even know it works in the rain because when i had my test with the model 3 or That's the right. model 3 god i got a cup seeing that the model s the model s you got people excited Whoa. Oh. Heart palpitation. What? Sorry, folks. Where did you get a Model 3? <laughs> no, we don't have a Model 3. No, no. Uh, when I did the Model S, uh, I was using That's a right. very heavy rain coming back yes. from our vacation uh, yeah. up north. And uh, yeah, it worked perfectly fine in the rain. So, yeah. Good. Great question. Well, thanks, John, for sending that in. And we have one more email from uh, Pete in Litchfield, Stratfordshire. England. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sending this in. Um, he talks about that they get a lot of rain in the UK. We do we do feel you. In fact, we're getting a lot of rain <laughs> God, in this neck of the woods here. Uh, and he's got some concerns about the Model 3 battery pack being located, of course, the model the batteries are on the under chassis, mm -hmm. the bottom of the car. What happens when you travel through a deep puddle or, or deep standing water? Um, is the battery compartment protected? And what happens if or when water gets inside it. Does that it affect the car or a warranty? Blah, blah, it's blah. It's an Great excellent question. question. And I'm yeah. here to tell you, Tesla's thought of that. Uh, How have they thought of that? Yeah. Uh, well, the battery pack, I mean, there's videos and you can see pictures yeah. on the internet where people have actually torn apart the battery pack. So the battery pack is a, is a sealed unit mm -hmm. and they put the batteries in the, and the cells and all the other stuff. And they put this very thick uh, black goop around the edges and it's very similar to a product. Um, I think it's pretty similar to a product called Pro Seal that I used to use in the aviation mm -hmm. deals. We used oh, to call yeah. it the Black Death because it smelled so bad. Yeah. But it was used to uh, Pro Seal's used to seal up gas tanks, mm -hmm. uh, fuel uh, fuel tanks in airplanes, mm -hmm. so that they don't leak. Uh, so this is put around, and they put a cover on there. And there's like 200 screws in the thing. So when the people actually take the battery packs apart, they literally destroy the cover in order to get this off because of the mm -hmm. goo that's that's mm -hmm. that's on there. So. To answer your question, the battery pack is sealed against um, water intrusion and splashing and stuff like that for a short amount of uh, a short amount of time. Uh, do not leave a car submerged <laughs> right. underwater. I mean, there's a gentleman, uh, Rich, who's who who has a YouTube channel and that's what he does. He salvages cars, Model S's, and he had a really bad experience with a, a Model S. Just maybe uh, from a, from Hurricane Sandy or something yeah, on the East Coast, yeah, I think. Something like that. One of those, and he yeah. bought a Model mm -hmm. S that was submerged for some time, and, yeah. and the battery pack was mostly trash. But actually, out of the 16 modules, only three of them were bad. So, mm. And it was submerged for, I don't know, how many weeks. Uh, so, wow. But the, the rest of the car was trash, kind of, uh, but the battery pack, most of the modules survived. So mm. for short immersions underwater and going through puddles, it's not a problem. I wouldn't worry about it. 
So Excellent. Good news. So it would not affect their warranty. That was another part of your no, question. No, as a matter of so, fact, I yeah. should mention that, that uh, Tesla has said that their battery um, or the drivetrain warranty, including the battery pack, even covers things like punctures. Hmm. Uh, remember a few years ago, they had some punctures in the battery pack and the cars caught yeah. fire. But they, they have a shield. A well, they fixed that problem, shield. but they've mm. even amended the warranty now. They even mm. cover. So if you happen to run nice. over something, the battery pack's covered. So I don't. It, they didn't specifically mention water intrusion. But from anecdotal evidence, it's it's mm -hmm. not an issue for for small puddles of water. So and we expect that same engineering and build to be in the Model Three. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Well, great. Thanks for those mailbag questions. And that is that time we've reached into the, the show. We tried to be a little quicker, trying to do these a little closer. But there's a lot of info in the last two weeks. We still have a little bit more. We want to talk. We about do. The book. Let's talk about EV Annex. Yes, Evanex, uh, great purveyors of all kinds of Tesla accessories, and so going to be doing some Model Three accessories when the time comes and they get their hands on a car. I uh, just want to give them a little shout out again. They've uh, very kindly sent us some books here for uh, called Getting Ready for Model 3. So if you're a Model 3 reservation holder and you have questions about the car, your charging situations, the technology, the history, it's uh, it's all written in this book. It's about 140 pages written by Roger Pressman. Yeah. Easy read, really nice exactly. read. Exactly. Yeah. So this is available on Amazon, but if you get it from Evanex at their website, it's evannex.com. And during your checkout um, uh, process, um, make sure you add the license plate frame to your book order and use the code GR4M3. It's get ready for Model 3, GR4M3. And then the license plate frame, which is worth $10, is, is sent to you for free. Yeah, and the license plate says getting ready for Model 3. Exactly. I'm sporting really, mine. So, they have some yeah. really neat accessories, too. If you they look do. on their website, mm -hmm. they've got these little... Um, these uh, charger hangers. Uh, so on one side it says, uh, okay to unplug. Now, sorry about the green screen. Here, I'll do it like this. Yeah, The <laughs> green screen right. won't knock it out here, but this side is yeah. green. This says, uh, do not unplug. And you can put your charging, or your um, your phone number details and stuff. So if you're charging your car, you can hang that on there, mm -hmm. uh, just as a convenience for others who may be looking at the car. And they have these really neat uh, courtesy notices that you can put on a car. So if you spot a car who's char who's parked in a charging spot, who's not charging, you. Mm -hmm. you can give them a little, yeah. mm, don't do that. That's so, right. Anyways, neat accessories you can get from those guys. Really appreciate them. Uh, thanks for all the uh, for the stuff there, Matthew. And yeah. uh, look forward to uh, seeing some more accessories from these guys in the near future. Yeah, we know they're going to be coming out with some Model 3 accessories. Oh, yeah. And I'm excited about that, yeah. seeing what they come out with. So uh, so don't maybe spend all your money on options right away. See what these guys yeah. come out with yeah. and add some more stuff. So how can people reach us, Ken? Yeah, well, obviously you can get to us by email because we, we get a lot of emails. We appreciate that. Our email address is m3ocshow at gmail.com. Right, and you can follow me at Twitter, and my handle is at Model3Owners. And I'm at Kenneth Bocor. Right. We have web form. Yeah, check out our web form at Model3OwnersClub.com. Thousands and thousands of members on there, lots of people it's discussing. Growing like it's, crazy. It's like the premier place to find out about Model3 information. Don't forget, we also have a Facebook page. You'll have to search for it. Just go to Facebook and just type in Model3OwnersClub, and then you can see our Facebook page on there. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please, yeah. Hit the like button on your way out because that way you get instant notification whenever we put out a new video or some new information comes out. You'll be the first to know. We had a long way to go for that silver button, but we're getting there <laughs> one day at a time. But we appreciate, we appreciate everybody. all of our subscribers. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And Patreon as well. Yeah. Thank we also you. have a Patreon campaign. You can find that at patreon.com forward slash Model 3 Owners Club. Every pledge, if you just want to take a look at it, great. But if you want to pledge, it helps keep yeah. the channel going, pays for things like microphones and camera equipment and green screens and all, you know the stuff that we need to keep the thing going. So mm -hmm. we appreciate all of our pledges on there. Uh, we have different levels, of course, that you can uh, yeah. that you can pledge. Uh, you know, you get early access to videos and stuff. So appreciate you take a look at that. And lastly, don't forget the store. Yeah, we have some great Model mm -hmm. 3 t-shirts uh, to show off your Model 3 cred and uh, your reservation. Um, I just added a bunch of new ones there to uh, show off whatever color choice that you so choose. So the uh, shirts are color coordinated to whatever color you happen to like. Of course, I'm not revealing mine yet. Not yet. Not you you almost slipped. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying mine either. Yeah. No, that'll come soon. Once the Model 3 configurator goes online, I'll plan on doing a little thing on a tour of the Model 3 configurator. Yep. And we'll have a little contest to figure out what my color is and then... The, uh, maybe we'll have some kind of price. Maybe, so. maybe a shirt or something. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, that's it for the show. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We very much appreciate it. Again, happy Canada Day for all our Canadian friends, and happy 4th of July and Independence Day in the U.S. Excellent. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, Thanks. for watching. Bye-bye.